tired of the everyday routine? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you... Escape! Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. Escape, brought to you by your Richfield gasoline dealer and the Richfield Oil Corporation of New York. Marketers of Richfield gasolines, motor oils, and other petroleum products. Look for the Richfield Eagle on the cream and blue pumps. Tonight, we escape to India in the story of an ex-army pilot caught up in murderous intrigue. As Joel Mercott tells it in his exciting tale, Serenade for a Cobra. He's got to keep playing. He's got to keep playing that music and I've got to listen. If he keeps it up long enough, I'll have a chance. But if he stops, I'm going to die. And he may stop. He may stop any minute because that's what he wants. He wants me to die. My name's Monk Slavin. I'm a flyer. I don't know what ever brought me to Calcutta, but something about the name had the smell of gold. It sounded like the kind of place where a good pilot who didn't ask questions might make a deal. A big deal and a fast one. But nothing seemed to be drifting my way. Nothing but the intense hot wind of the monsoon and the fog from the Ganges and the sea, rolling over the city from all sides and strangling it. There was nothing to do but drink gin and quinine water at the airport bar and pray that you didn't get malaria. Oh, hello, Slavin. Oh, hello, Grant. You back again? Just flew in with a small cargo, a very small one. Mind if I sit down? Help yourself. You can't get out of Calcutta tonight. Another five minutes of that fog and there'll be a better ceiling in here than there is out there. <laughs> you sound like the monsoon's getting on your nerves. What you need is a job. Doing what? Flying stinking hides down here from Kathmandu? You don't call that a job, do you? It's the best work I can get at the moment. Now, if I had a chap like you to handle the flights, I'd have time to dig up some new business. You don't have to dig it up, Grant. It's waiting for you. You used to ferry a lot of stuff in and out of China. Yes, but that was before the present situation. You could still make a buck out of China. A good fat profit any time you wanted. I don't fly contraband. No ethics, huh? Well, if you care to call it that, yes. That's why you're starving with a lousy one-ship freight line. I could take offense at that, but I won't. You don't even have a ship, Slavin, and I'll wager you have very little cash. Well, that's a safe wager. You'd win. <laughs> why not be practical, old boy? I can offer you a hundred pounds a month and meals and quarters at the base at Kathmandu. You know, I don't know how I can resist this chance to become a millionaire, but I'll try. It's better than nothing. Cushy enough. 420 miles down, 420 back, and no flying over the hump. No thanks. I beg pardon, Mr. Grant. Oh, here's my mechanic. I have completed your errand, sir. Oh, that's fine, Jaffa. I'll be right with you. If you change your mind, Slavin, you know where to find me. Yeah, leave a light burning in the window. But don't wait up for me. That's all I got. Two-bit offers from men like Grant. A beggar, just like the reformed beggar that followed him around. His native man, Jafar. A Hindu street faker who learned about planes at an RAF base during the war. Now Grant had him for a grease monkey and a radio operator at the base. Ah, you couldn't beat the British. They found a way to hang on. I reached for my half-empty glass, and I... There's another drink beside it, a full one. A drink I hadn't ordered. Is it permissible for a lady to buy the drinks? Permissible? It's a big, happy new custom. And thank the lady for me if you ever see her. The American flyers speak sharply, like the eagle. But the poor eagle has no wings. You were going to fix that for me, baby, remember? You had big connections while I'm still sitting here waiting. My friends can use a flyer. But only if he has a plane. Well, just wait here. I'll go out and buy one. How come your hotshot connections can't afford a plane? It's not the case of affording. Planes are difficult to get. The license, the questions. The authorities are forever asking questions. But my friends, they never ask questions. If you had a plane, for instance, they would not ask who owned it. Yeah, I see what you mean. I heard Grant offer you a job. If you worked for him, there would be days when you would be waiting here for cargo. Enough time to make a little extra flight. 
A flight not on Mr. Grant's schedule. And remember, my friends pay well. Yeah. Yeah, maybe Grant's gonna get himself a pilot after all. So I took Grant's job, and the next morning when the weather cleared, we drove to the field, through the teeming streets with hot, oppressive, suffocating wind carrying the stench of the salt marshes across the city. It seemed like an eternity before we were off the ground and feeling the cool mercy of being airborne. Well, old boy, what do you think of her? Well, she handles all right. I just don't like the Havilands. What is it, war surplus? Yes, but completely reconditioned. Pressurized cabin, heating and air conditioning system. I've changed everything for comfort. Yeah, even the radio. Why the open speaker instead of the headphones? Picked up a fungus infection in my ears in Burma during the war. Headphones were painful, so I put in a speaker. Well, I thought the British philosophy about pain was grin and bear it. <laughs> Only when we can't do anything about it, old boy. Oh, yeah, I see. What's our ETA? Hour and a half. How's your landing strip? We call the base Black Cat. Your plane identification is Red Kitten. The field's a bit like a, like a waffle iron, so set her down as gently as you can. I'll treat her like she was my own, Grant. Just like she was my very own. Well, Katmandu was no improvement on Calcutta. I could see it from the air as we came in. The ancient wooden buildings and the temples, thousands of them, but outnumbered by the throngs of humanity in the dirty streets. We barely hit the strip before the rain started again, brought in from nowhere by the wind. We were weathered down again at the stinking base outside the town, and that's when Jafar, the mechanic, started with the punji, a kind of a native flute. I say, Slavin, do sit down. You're wearing me out. I'm wearing you out. Listen to that thing. Don't he ever stop? He's just amusing himself. Sit down, man. How about a hand of cards? How hmm? can I concentrate on cards while he's playing that thing? Can't you make him stop? I can't make him do anything. He's in his own hut and, well, frankly, he's not bothering me. Well, he's bothering me. Why the slicker? Where are you going? To turn that thing off before it drives me nuts. Slavin, these Hindus are strange people. They resist pressure. I'd advise you to... Save it. Grease monkeys handle the same way in India as they do anywhere else. Slavin, be careful of that. Jafar. Jafar, do you hear me? Jafar! Jafar, stop that thing! I don't know why I stopped inside the door, but I did. There was something eerie about the room. Something in Jafar's burning black eyes that held me. I watched the flute moving slowly as he played. And then I saw it in the dim light. The weaving, puffed head of a cobra. The snake was dancing in front of him. Oh, I'd seen cobras before in the bazaars and in the streets. No matter how many times I saw them, the sight of that deadly, slowly moving, puffed head was enough to turn my blood to ice. I backed slowly out of the room and closed the door. He played it every night after that, every waking hour of the night, until I could hear it even in my sleep. The strange, whining dirge, bringing with it the memory of a weaving head of a snake. In clear weather, I, I could get away from it for a while, but it would be waiting for me when I got back. And in Jafar's eyes, there was a challenge. I could feel his hot stare burning into me as we worked on the plane. What's on your mind, Jafar? What do you keep staring at me for? Why did you change your mind, sir? Why do you now work for Mr. Grant? What's it to you, Jafar? Mr. Grant is good to Jafar. Mr. Grant is too quick to trust people. I don't know what you're talking about. Yes, you do, sir. You know. Get out of here, Jafar. Did you hear me? I said get out of here. I must work on Mr. Grant's plane, sir. That's an order. Get out! Slavin! <laughs> What's going on there? Get out! Slavin! <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! Get him out of here before I kill him! Go, Jaffa! Please. All right. If you say so, Mr. Grant. Slavin, I don't know what started this, but I do know that I don't want it to happen again. Then keep him out of my hair. I don't like any of these people, and he rates number one on my list. You made that plain enough. I'll try to keep him away from you. I only hope he will stay away from you. What do you mean by that? You've hurt him in his pride, Slavin. You don't understand these Hindus. He won't come back at you with force, 
But he will come back. Oh, will he? Well, he knows who's boss now. I'll be in Calcutta with this load tonight. Tell him to get that flute out of his system while I'm gone. If he plays it when I get back, I'll ram it down his throat. <laughs> Aren't you going to buy me a drink? You don't make me any money, baby, so don't cost me any. But I am going to make you money. A lot of money. You better come up with it fast. My job looks temporary. Is tomorrow fast enough? Tomorrow I'm bringing another load of hides down from Kathmandu. I'm going back there tonight. Oh, that will fit in nicely. When you leave Kathmandu tomorrow, you will make a short side trip. One stop in China. Then come back here to Calcutta. China, huh? Well, now you're beginning to interest me, baby. Where in China? My friend knows. His name is Karkanov. He will be waiting for you tonight when you return to Kathmandu. Meet him at midnight, at the rear of Great Temple of Vishnu, at edge of town. How big is the job? Big, but very little trouble. That is, if you are not squeamish. When I say how big, I mean how much. For you? 10,000 American dollars. 10,000? How much of that do you expect? Oh, Karkonov pays me. The 10,000 is all yours. Now will you buy me a drink? Yeah. Now I'll buy both of us a drink. Did you know that gasoline is one of the most mysterious chemical compounds in the world? Gasoline can contain hundreds of different components, but one stands out for its remarkable Antonoc quality. It's xylene. Xylene is one of the highest Antonoc gasoline components ever discovered. And today, xylene is contained in every gallon of Richfield gasoline. Xylene in Richfield gasoline helps give your car that quick surge of knock-free power. And you feel the silent power of xylene when you zip up a long hill. Moreover, your Richfield dealer offers you a choice of two great Richfield gasolines with xylene. Richfield high octane at regular price for motors of average compression. And Richfield ethyl for motors of highest compression. Let your Richfield dealer help you decide which Richfield gasoline is best for your car. Stop where you see the Richfield Eagle and the cream and blue pumps. Get the gasoline that contains one of the highest Antonoc components known to science. Get Richfield gasoline with xylene. And now we return you to Escape. $10,000. Enough to get out of the trap. I could go back to the States on that, buy my own plane, pick up my own spots for a smart deal. I thought of it all the way back to Kathmandu. This would be my last night in that hole. My last night. Black Cat, calling Black Cat. This is Red Kitten calling Black Cat, over. Red Kitten, this is Black Cat. Go ahead. ETA, 15 minutes. Visibility poor. How is it there? Poor, but all right for landing, sir. Light landing fields on, on all corners of the field. Flares, you hear me? Mr. Grant has already left to do that, sir. Good. Would you like some music, sir? What do you mean, music? My music, sir. Why, that dirty little swine? He's just trying to needle me, but I wouldn't let him. I couldn't afford it now. Just this one night, I could forget anything thinking about that. I spotted the oil fires at the four corners of the field, burning a clear spot through the ground haze. I turned on my landing lights and set her down like an old lady's rocking chair. I'd never land on this field again. I'd use it for one more takeoff tomorrow, but I'd never land on it again. <laughs> Of your flashlight, Mr. Slavin. Karkanov? Where are you? On the steps of the temple. No, no, no. Don't flash the light. Keep it off, please. Ah, you. You are very prompt, Mr. Slavin. Ten thousand dollars worth. What time do you expect to take off tomorrow? I'm scheduled to leave for Calcutta at noon. Excellent. As you have been told, I want you to go into China. Oh, it's vague. It's a big country. Inner Mongolia. It's just south of the city of Suchow. Ooh, that's about a thousand miles in. Twelve hundred. Here is a map. What's the deal? 
On the map is the location of a field. Not a regular air base, but good enough for a landing. You will time your landing for just before sundown. You will take off again almost immediate and return by night. Back over the hump at night, huh? That makes it interesting. It will be dull, really, as all well-planned things should be dull, but profitable. A countryman of mine named Leontovich will meet you when you land at Suchao. With him will be an old Chinese. They will return with you. Too hot for him up there? The old Chinese is a wealthy merchant. He will bring his wealth out with him. Through connections, we have arranged this escape for him. Look, there's something else you'll have to arrange. I don't carry enough fuel to get me to Suchow and back to Calcutta. You will be refueled. Nothing has been overlooked. Where do I contact you when I get back? When you land at Calcutta, taxi to the north end of the field. I will be there with automobile to pick up your passenger and his uh, cargo. Passenger? You mean passengers, don't you? You said there'd be two. Your man Leontovich and the old Chinese. <laughs> A trifle I forgot to mention. They will both start back with you, of course, but the old Chinese will not complete the trip. You understand? Yeah, I understand. He disappeared into the darkness and I started back to the field. The night was full of sound. Even the damp heat had a sound of its own, like nothing else in the world. But the... there was something else. Jafar, where are you? Jafar! Jafar! Where are you, Jafar? Where are you? Answer me! I'll find you! I'll get you! I'll get you, you dog! No! No, 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 the devil. He's riding me. Uh, I can't afford to think about him now. I gotta think about tomorrow. Just get back to the field and think about tomorrow. He was on the field in the morning, checking the plane as though nothing had happened. But I could see the glitter in his black eyes like the glitter of a snake's. I wanted to smash his face with my fist, but I couldn't. I had to fly out as though nothing was wrong. The motors caught sweetly and I lifted off the strip like a feather and then headed south for Calcutta until I was out of sight of the field. Then I made a half circle to the north and headed for the hump. Ah, she took it like a swallow. Past the white peak of Mount Everest, the top of the world, and out over the great plateau of Tibet. Then the northern rim of the Himalayas dipped beneath my wings and I was over the hill country of Mongolia. I hit it right on the nose, the field outside the town of Suchow, and made my landing just as the bottom edge of the sun was kissing the horizon. I am Leontovich. The Chinese have a truck with fuel. Quickly! Why so many of them? Karkalov said there'd be one Chinese. They are the old man's friends. They come to see him off safely. That is why we must go to the bother of taking him along, far away. All right, but watch them. An armored car will come over the hill as we are ready to take off. Do not be alarmed. I thought you had everything fixed here. Quiet. They will not be after us. They will take care of the Chinese we leave behind. Well, there better not be any slip-ups. Let's get out of here fast. Give me that hose up here. There were five of the Chinese, and deep in their impressive eyes was quiet terror. One was an old man clutching a wicker basket, but the terror in his eyes was tempered with a glint of hope. The others just stared at the plane with a terrible yearning. The last of the gas trickled into the tanks. We took the hose down. The truck backed off. Are you ready? Yeah, boost him in. Come, old one. They lifted the old man into the plane. And Leontovich climbed in after him, closing the hatch. The motors caught, and I nosed her into the wind, just as the four Chinese on the ground made a dash for the plane. The reason was clear. Coming across the hill at the end of the field, an armored car. Hey, what is this? They're shooting. Not at us, but hurry. Don't worry. Here we go. Our friends on the ground seem to be dead. That was nicely arranged. Now they won't be able to talk. How about the old man? In the cabin, he saw nothing. It is almost dark. We can persuade him to leave us at any time now. Wait. Someplace over Tibet. As you say. Karkana's man hadn't flown before. I could see it in his face. And I was thinking, thinking about the wicker basket. That was the cargo I could carry alone, all alone. I didn't have to land at Calcutta. 
I could go on to Bombay and be out of India on a ship to Africa before morning. The moon was bright over Tibet and it looked like a ghost land. The old Chinese seemed to be sleeping when I glanced back, his head bent down over the precious basket in his lap. I nodded to Leontovich. He moved slowly, methodically. He slipped an arm under the old man's head, jerked an elbow tight against his throat. Ah! I saw the old man's eyes, the terror and the hope mixed with surprise, then realization, then resignation. He slumped and the basket slid to the floor at his feet. I set the ship on the automatic pilot and went back into the cabin. He is ready to leave us. I'll open the hatch. You carry him over and dump him out. Ah, such a shame. But at least we shall keep the basket for remembrance. He picked the old man up. I opened the hatch. As Lantovich came to the door, he felt the vacuum pull of the rushing air sliding past the plane. He tried to draw back, but I caught him with my foot and shoved them both out. No! Ah! I was alone in the cabin with a basket. When I opened it, I didn't even mind the stink of the hides. American dollars, British pounds, and jewelry. In a few hours, I'd be sailing from Bombay. A millionaire sailing from Bombay. Something was wrong. I felt it as I started back over the hump. It was bumpy, and the ship slithered and kicked, and there was a wall of darkness outside. Uh, there was something inside, too. Something or somebody in the cabin of the ship. I turned on the cabin lights and, and looked back, and there was nothing but a load of hides, but the feeling wouldn't go away. I tried to shake it off. In half an hour, I'd be passing over Kathmandu, just a sound in the night. I had to have a look through the cabin. I set the ship in the automatic pilot and slid from the seat, but she bucked me and I had to grab the controls. Mount Everest was someplace nearby in the dark. I was sweating. I couldn't leave the controls now. I had to stay with them. But I kept looking back into the cabin with that same feeling. Then I saw it. I saw something long and thin slithering across the hides. A loose rope. I tried to tell myself it was a loose rope, but, but a rope doesn't move like that. And the head lifted. The hooded, the hooded head of a cobra. A cobra in the plane. The plane in the nearest base was Kathmandu, still 20 minutes away, and I couldn't take my hands off the controls. I flicked the radio switch. Black Cat. This is Red Kitten calling Black Cat. Come in, Black Cat. Red Kitten calling. Come in, Black Cat. Over. Black Cat to Red Kitten. It is a surprise to hear from you, sir. You should be in Calcutta, sir. You know where I am, you devil, you filthy little devil. Has my pet awakened? He wants to be fed, sir. The cobra is very mean when he is not fed. You put him in the plane. The sting of the cobra kills swiftly, Mr. Slavin. What? What can I do? Jafar, I'm begging you. What can I do? Nothing, sir. There's nothing you can do. I could help you, He's getting but... closer. Please, he's getting closer, please. Please! You do not like my music, sir. The music? A serenade on the flute might distract him, but you do not care for the flute. Play it! For heaven's sake, man, play it! He's only six feet away from me. I will play, but will you land at Kathmandu? Yes, 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 only play it! Play! The snake came closer. That ugly hooded head, spreading and raising and weaving in time with the music coming over the radio. It was only two feet away. Death only two feet away, and if Jafar stopped playing, he'd strike. An ugly, ill-tempered, hungry cobra, deadly to anybody but Jafar, who knew when he wanted to be fed. He knew the only thing in the world that could hold him was that flute. That flute, as long as Jafar kept playing it. over the hump. I saw the oil fires being lit on the strip at Black Cat. That meant that Grant knew I was coming in. Well, the flute was driving me mad. And the Cobra. I never knew when he'd strike at some movement of my hands on the controls, and yet I had to move him to land. Oh, Grant! Grant, where are you? I'm here, Slavin. Please, give me landing instructions. Please, please, Grant! When you hit the strip, taxi over to the operation's shack, as close as you can get. Jafar can keep the flute going. We'll open the hatch and try to distract the snake. Maybe we can get you out. Make him keep playing, Grant. Make him keep playing. We're coming out to watch your landing. 
I have the police with me, Slavin. Your friends in Calcutta have already been arrested on Jafar's information. I made my approach to the strip. The head of the snake never stopped weaving. I could see Grant and the police in the light of the oil fires. I cut the motors, dropped down at the edge of the field. Another minute. If Jafar could just keep playing another minute, I was ready to set it down. The ground was right under the wings. And then the, the flute stopped! I'll be landing! Jafar! Don't give it with me! Well, what do you think, officer? Will he live? Oh, bad crash. Afraid not. Too bad about your plane. Oh, it's insured. I'll get another. Oh, you might possibly get the money and the jewels, too, if nobody claims them. I doubt if anybody will. No matter. I only want what is my own. Well, Jafar, I'm afraid I shall have to arrest you. Why, sir? There is no law that says I must play my flute. No, but you deliberately put the snake in the plane. The snake lies there dead, sir. Have you examined it? It is not poisonous. The poison sack and the fangs I removed long ago. Oh, you mean the snake couldn't have hurt him? He couldn't have been killed by that snake any more than he could have been shot by an unloaded gun. I did not harm him, sir. My people do not use violence. It is against our belief. Hmm. I see, there's a strange one. No matter how long I'm out here, I'll never understand them. Neither will Slavin, I'm afraid. We'd better cover him. He's dead. Here's a weather forecast that's guaranteed to be accurate. There is a lot of hot weather coming. And driving in hot weather can spell trouble for your car, cause serious wear, sudden breakdowns. Don't take chances. See the Richfield gasoline dealer tomorrow and ask him to protect all points of your car with Richfield All Point Safety Service. Richfield All Point Safety Service is especially designed to guard your car against wear and breakdowns. The Richfield gasoline dealer will change your oil to Rich Lube All Weather Motor Oil the Pennsylvania premium-grade oil that cleans as it lubricates. He'll safely lubricate your chassis, differential, wheel bearings, and transmission. And he can care for automatic transmissions, too, with top-rated Richfield automatic transmission fluid. And finally, the Richfield dealer will safety check your car for all likely trouble spots. Get Richfield all-point safety service for your car tomorrow. Stop where you see the Richfield Eagle on the cream and blue pumps. Escape is produced and directed by William N. Robeson and tonight has presented Serenade for a Cobra by Joel Murcott. Featured in the cast were Charles McGraw as Slavin, Ramsey Hill as Grant, Jay Novello as Jafar. Also heard were Lucille Meredith, Joseph Kearns, and Paul Fries. Special music arranged and played by Ivan Dittmars. Next week... You are slowly walking down the deserted street of a small cow town. And coming toward you is one of the bloodiest gunfighters of the West who has sworn to kill you and from whom there is no escape. Next week at this time, the Richfield Oil Corporation of New York invites you to escape to the range country of the early West and to the story of a boy who grew up to be a gunfighter as Joel Mercott tells it in his exciting story, Sundown. Goodbye then, until this same time next week when once again we offer you... Escape. Tom Hanlon speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.